Hello, everybody. My name is Thomas Egan. I am one of the assistant directors of admission here at Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. Really appreciate you joining us today for our uh, event regarding the pre-professional and professional experiences here at MCPHS. So what we're gonna do is go through a panel of our illustrious alumni and some current students to give you a uh, look into what it's like to be a current pre-professional and professional phase student at MCPHS, and then some of the outcomes and what some of our alumni are doing who graduated from these programs. So without further ado, I'm gonna go down the line and have our panelists introduce themselves. So why don't you go first, Kehea? Introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself as well. Hi everyone, my name is Kehea Cox. I am from Holderness, New Hampshire. Um, I am an occupational therapy student and I am in my pre-professional phase. So I'm only in my second year of school right now. Excellent, thank you Kehea. And over to Alessandro. Hi everybody, my name is Alessandro. Um, I am a third year physician assistant student and I'm currently on my clinical year. Um, I'm originally from North Haven, Connecticut. Um, I live in Boston usually, but right now I'm on my elective rotation in Fairfield for plastic surgery. Sorry, we're gonna go over to Keelan right now. Uh, hi, my name is Keelan. Um, I am originally from Galloway, New Jersey, and I recently graduated from the physical therapy program this past May, and I'm working as a physical therapist in Sutton, Massachusetts currently. Awesome, excellent. Well, thank you so much, Keelan. Um, and then we are gonna go to Shweta. Hello, everyone. My name is Shweta. I'm an osteopathic medical student in my first year at Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine. And I'm originally from Chino Hills, California. Awesome, thank you, Shweta. And last but certainly not least, we're gonna bring it over to Lauren. Hi, everyone, I'm Lauren. Um, I'm originally from Watertown, Connecticut. I'm a 2017 graduate from the pre-med pre-optometry program at MCPHS and a 2020 graduate from the optometry program as well from MCPHS. I'm currently an optometrist working in West Hartford at an optometry ophthalmology practice. Excellent, I think people will get the idea of what you're doing with the background, but I love it. All right, so we're gonna dive right into the questions and we're gonna come right back to you, Kahea. So I'll read this slowly and if anybody needs me to repeat it, let me know and I will be happy to do so. So question one for Kahea. Um, why did you choose to apply to the program at MCPHS? Second part, what advantages did you find the program afforded you? And what is your experience when the what what is your experience in the program been like? So go ahead, Kahea. So I initially chose to apply to the MCPHS program simply because I really caught my interest. I thought it was really interesting that the OT department just had kind of created a new OT program. So I thought that was really interesting and they had kind of been able to collaborate a lot of different professors from different schools to build this OT program from the ground up. So that's personally why I chose it. I thought that was really interesting and kind of being part of something that's being created. Um, the advantages that it afforded me, I mean, Right now I'm in my pre-professional years, so I think really like the advantages that I've had so far are the staff. Um, the staff are very hands-on and they're always more than willing to help. I've always said that throughout my MCPHS um, career is that the students are never just a number, we're always individuals, which I've always like really appreciated. Um, and then I think the last question was, what is, wait, what is my experience in like so far? Yep. <laughs> um, my experience at Silver has been really good. Um, just kind of keeping up with the hustle and bustle of being in a master's program. Um, I have really enjoyed it so far. I think it's kind of with everything going on in the world right now, it's kind of thrown a wrench into the process of what it would usually be like, but we've had support and being online has been a smooth transition because our professors are going through kind of that same process of getting used to everything. So it's been really nice to have staff and faculty and even students that are such a small knit community. So they're always willing to help each other out. Excellent, thank you. And so over to Alessandro, do you need me to repeat the question, Alessandro, or do you have it down? Sure, that would be great if you could repeat it. <laughs> Happy to. Okay, so three-parter. Why did you choose to apply to the program that you selected at MCPHS? 
What advantages did you find the program afforded you? And what has your experience in the program been like? So I chose to apply to the MCPHS PA program because I was originally um, an undergraduate student in the pre-medical um, program, and I actually graduated in 2018. It was convenient. I was already familiar with the campus. Um, there was a lot of advantages that I had heard of. Um, for example, we take the gross anatomy class over at Harvard Med and use those um, cadaver labs. I thought that was really cool. Um, I also really love the location and how we are able to do some of our rotations in the Boston area. Um, and I'm currently on my rotations right now, although the one that I I'm currently on was set up in Connecticut. Um, all of my others are in the Boston area. Um, and some of the things, some of the things just like to explain how my experience has been, um, clinical year is going really great despite the pandemic. Um, it's been really, really refreshing to finally be able to put my didactic, what I've learned in didactic and put that to use in the clinical year. Excellent. So I'm going to bring it over to you, Keila. So go right ahead with your answer. All right, perfect. Um, so similar to Alessandro, I was originally an undergrad student MCPHS in the health psychology program, and I graduated from that in 2018. And uh, the reason I was really drawn to the physical therapy program at MCPHS is for a couple of reasons. One is they have smaller class sizes compared to other uh, professional phases of physical therapy program. So we had 40 students in our class and I just love the camaraderie that we built. I would, am such close friends with everyone that I've met. We have such a strong connection. Our alumni support is really good as well. And then I also love the, how the program was set up, which is not similar to other PT programs. So how MCPHS does it is we do all of our didactic material in the first two years and we have all of our hands-on experiences in lab. We do like mini clinical experiences, just going out into the community and observing. And then our final year of the program, the third year is all clinical rotations. So I really liked that we could get all of our information in under our belt and then be able to apply it on our own for the next year and really get a feel for what it's like working in the field. Um, and I feel like that's not um, similar to how a lot of other programs do it. So it really made the most sense for me learning wise. And I really think it helped me grow as a clinician. Um, and then some of the advantages was being able to again, have such a strong alumni to support. A lot of our clinical instructors are alumni, and we have such strong connections with uh, different companies and just different opportunities all across the country. So it's really nice to just kind of put feelers out there. And my experience with the program was amazing. It was the, probably my favorite three years of my whole educational experience, and I just love everything that I got out of the program. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Caleb. Appreciate that response. And now we're going to bring it over to Shweta. So go ahead, Shweta. Hello. So um, specifically why I applied to the pre-med program, I graduated in 2020. But um, the main reason why was because of the association with LECOM, but also for being in Boston itself. Boston's such an up-and-coming area and has so many connections within it, as many of the students have mentioned before. So I definitely wanted to get more hands-on experience here at the top hospitals um, as being a pre-med student going into med school. And I feel like within the program, I think the classes in my undergrad education has helped me so far. Um, currently right now, I'm in quote unquote core, which is very similar to the courses that I have taken at MCPHS. So it did um, bring a huge advantage for me. And so far, I do like my program a lot. It is very different from the other pathways since I am in Erie, Pennsylvania right now, but I am thoroughly enjoying it. And I think even though no matter which grad program you're in, um, the pre um, your undergrad education does help out a lot, um, especially because of the professors that we have on campus. Over to Lauren, if you wouldn't mind giving an answer. Thank you. Sure. So similar to what Keelan said, um, I like that MCPHS offered a small class size feel. So uh, my class ended up being about 54 students, and we all weren't just classmates. We all really just became family. Um, we worked through everything together. Um, an advantage to MCPHS is that they offer clinical um, skills right away. So from the first moment you're at, you're in the optometry program, you're learning clinical skills. And by the fall of my first, uh, rather my second year, uh, I was able to give a full eye exam. 
Um, they put us in the clinic right away. Um, and not only was there a clinic at school, we went to offsite clinics where we were able to perform exams on patients throughout all of Worcester as well as Framingham, Massachusetts. Um, so really the hands-on clinical experience was what sets MCPHS apart uh, from a lot of other optometry programs. Um, the other thing is I, as I mentioned, attended the um, undergrad uh, program there. So it set me up for um, a lot of success in the optometry program for the graduate portion. Excellent. Thank you so much, Lauren. And thank you for all the answers for question one, guys. That was great. So we're going to move to our next question. So I'm coming back to you, Kahea. So would you be able to walk us through the application process to your program? For example, an overview on your application experience and what the applicants can expect. So go ahead, Kahea. Um, so from what I can remember, my application process was very straightforward. One of the things that I actually really enjoyed was it didn't require an interview and I get really like nervous in person. So I was like, actually really thankful for that. Um, they also had a few different opportunities where if you wanted to come see the campus, they're more than willing to show you the labs and the different um, things that they have to offer. So that was really nice that I got to still see the campus without having to go there at like such a high stress moment. Um, I know they used like a, a portal where they just listed everything that you needed to fill out. Um, I know there was a personal statement, um, which was actually kind of nice because it gave the student or myself an opportunity to kind of show the program why I thought I was a good fit for it, which was cool for me as well, because I got to also dive into the experiences and the specialties of all the different staff that were going to be there and why their interests match with mine. And then I believe I actually applied, which is the recommended time, October before the fall semester. So just making sure that you give yourself an ample amount of time to not only start the application, but to finish it and get it turned in, because I think it is a rolling process. So whenever they get applications in, they'll review them and then send them back out to like let you know. Um, so that was nice. And I believe I actually found out I got in um, in December. So that was really exciting. Excellent. Thank you, Kahea. And we're going to go over to Alessandro, if you would answer. Sure. Um, so the application process is pretty similar in terms of the timeline. Um, I believe I started getting my application stuff together for PA school in June, July, August. Um, have to submit it by the end of September. We submitted through the CASPA, um, and that just required, you know, a couple of letters of recommendation. Um, making sure that you have some shadowing hours in there, any other experience or licenses or cert certifications that you might have. Um, and then interviews began, I believe in November, but mine was in mid-January. Um, and the actual interview process was pretty much like a whole day long event um, where there's a couple of different components. I remember there was a one-on-one -on -one component of the interview. Um, where you chatted with either an alumni or a professor. Um, and then there was a component where you went for a campus tour to check out the um, surrounding buildings um, and what you might have access to. There was also a component where you, you had like a group interview um, and you worked with three or four other students to discuss a um, like a clinical scenario. Um, so after that took place, I think I found out my acceptance in the spring sometime, maybe April or May. Um, and that was pretty much it. It was very straightforward. Excellent. Well, thank you, Alessandra. I appreciate you breaking it up into sections there, too. Um, so now we're going to bring it over to Keelan for her experience. Yeah, I would say that the uh, application pro process for physical therapy was pretty straightforward as well as Kahe and Alessandro kind of mentioned. Um, I th believe I started getting my application together around the summer, the year prior to the year that I was starting for PT. So if I wanted to start the following fall, I was applying basically the year before. Um, getting my whole application together, you do it through PTCast, which is like an online portal. So it's similar to like the undergrad the common app type situation. So it really walks you through components that you need in terms of recommendation letters, uh, transcripts, um, uploading verification of any contact hours. I believe when I applied, we needed about 10 contact hours, but you can do as many or as little as you want. So I shout at like hospitals, outpatient clinics, um, just getting a lot of intern hours under my belt. Um, and I, there was also a personal statement section as well. And then in terms of the interview process that came afterwards, once you submitted the formal application, 
um, you end up going to campus. We got like a campus tour and it was nice because with my undergraduate experience, it was in Boston, but with physical therapy, it was in Worcester. So I got to experience what the new area would be like, really get a feel for the campus and the other buildings and everything. Um, and the interview was conducted by one of the faculty members and it was just like a really nice kind of day to kind of get a feel for things and just walking through what the next steps are from there. And I believe I found out sometime in the winter before I ended up starting that following fall. Um, so very quick kind of turnaround. I felt like I had a lot of support in terms of any questions that I had, if I was missing anything, um, everyone was very supportive and just kind of walked you through the whole thing, which I felt was very helpful. Excellent. Thank you, Keelan. Um, and now we're going to go over to Shweta. So Shweta, go ahead. So my process was a little bit different. First and foremost, I had to be accepted into MCPHS's undergraduate program. So uh, no matter which major, um, I decided on pre-medical and health studies. Um, from there, I am an early accepted student. So I was part of the EAP program, as LECOM would call it. And this early acceptance program, what would happen is that you just apply online, but you have to maintain a certain GPA. Um, I applied in my senior year of high school. So I had to maintain a certain GPA as well as, as a certain ACT or SAT score. From there, it's very similar to kind of um, the application process as mentioned before. So um, you fill out the application almost like a personal statement in a way. And from there, you um, get accepted for an interview. And if you do, um, you go out to the campus and they give you a tour of the campus, which was really nice just to give an idea of what it's like. And you are in a group interview as well as an individual interview as well. From there, um, you find out within like a month, I would say that's when I found out if you're accepted into the program. And um, my fourth year at MCPHS, I had to uh, fill out a, a secondary application, which is kind of like the secondary essay, specifically addressing why did I choose um, DO at LECOM. And then I had to get two letters of recommendation. All right. Well, thank you very much, Sweta. And then over to Lauren, if you would tell us a little bit about it. Sure. So I applied a year um, before the year before I was um, ready to attend uh, the optometry program. Um, so it's definitely a rolling admission process. So the earlier you get your application in, um, the better off it will be. Um, so I think I applied in October and I had my interview in November and I actually heard back, I think about a week or two later. Um, so the interview process was um, pretty straightforward. You go on the tour of the school, um, meet with faculty members and you actually meet with other students. Um, so you can get a chance to ask a lot of questions. Um, obviously you have to take the OAT, um, which is the optometry admission test. Um, and the application is through OptomCast um, and it's really user friendly and pretty straightforward. So they'll tell you all the information that you're missing or that you need um, as well as letters of recommendation. Um, and you, know, you kind of submit your personal statement and all the information that they need. Um, and then they kind of tell you when your application is being processed um, and when you can reach, when this, you expect the schools to reach out to you. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Lauren. All right. So now we are going to go to question three, and I'm coming back to you, Kahea. So could you please tell us about the experience you had or are having at MCPHS in your program and describe what a typical day is for your program, student clinicals, classes, out of the class experience, stuff like that. So Kahe, if you wouldn't mind taking that away. Of course. Um, so currently as an MCPHS student, it's a little different than my first year because we're half online, half in person, of course, which a lot of programs are doing now to keep um, students safe. So I have classes and I've had um, classes since my first year, Monday through Thursday. And basically now because of COVID and everything, we have online classes Monday, um, Wednesday, Thursday. And then I go into, into the campus on Tuesday for like my lab hours. So we still get that hands on uh, because obviously we need those hours. Um, and we have a pediatric lab and we have an adult lab. So we're there pretty much all day Tuesday, just kind of working on those different skills that we need to develop. It was pretty interesting making a cast over Zoom this summer. So I think I've definitely become more adaptable um, throughout this whole process. Um, even before all of this started, just in my first year, 
I have like a few weeks of running like a group therapy session uh, for multiple consecutive weeks with other OT students, which was really nice because you get that idea and that feeling of being with clients and, you know, being able to talk to them and running activities. That was really nice. And um, since everything switched over, we've had a few hours of observations for pediatrics. And then uh, starting January, I will be going to my first um, level one field work um, rotation. So I'm really excited about that. Hopefully I'll get like a adult um, population and then the next rotation will be a peds and then hopefully taking the boards and graduating. But I'll probably start studying for the board soon because I'll take them uh, next fall. So as of right now, it's just kind of going with the flow and trying to keep up. This is our last, since I'm in my second year, first semester, it's our last semester of actual coursework before we go into our professional rotation. So I'm excited. Staying optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's important these days. So excellent, Kay. Well, that's great to hear. Um, so over to you, Alessandro. Sure. So my day-to-day -day right now, I'm on clinical. So um, I'm working with my preceptor, who is a physician assistant, and I work at a med spa in Fairfield. Um, I do three or four days with her per week. Um, and then I also do one or two days at a plastic surgery office. Um, so this is actually an elective that I was able to set up on my own. Um, it's called out of network, but most of the rotation sites um, take place in the Massachusetts area. Um, but the rotations are all about five weeks long. At the end of the five week period, there's a two, two days of graduate seminar that involves the end of rotation exam. Um, as well as some other lectures. Um, so it's kind of helpful. It, it sounds like five weeks is a long time, but it goes by really quickly. Um, I'm already at the end of my block five, and next week I will be starting a new rotation, um, and I will be graduating in May 2021. So coming soon. That's excellent. And yes, that will fly by for anybody out there listening. It'll be a lot quicker than you think. Thank you so much, Alessandro. Mm -hmm. um, so now we're going to go to Keelan. Yeah, so my current data is a little bit different just because I luckily got to graduate in May 2020. So now I'm out in the field right now. But while I was in the physical therapy program, my didactic years looked kind of similar. So I would go to my morning classes, kind of take the afternoon to prep for my afternoon labs, um, just kind of studying, reviewing different things. And then I would have either group studies with some of my friends or just kind of studying on my own for some of our classes and being able to review for things. Um, on clinical, it was basically like working full time. So you were working Monday through Friday, 40 hours a week um, in whatever setting it was. So I was split between an outpatient clinic in my first rotation, which is where I'm currently working now. So that connection really set me up for future success post-graduation. Um, I was also at an uh, acute care setting in a hospital and, and then another outpatient clinic just to get some more of those hours in the setting that I would prefer to work in under my belt. Um, and then currently I am a full-time therapist at the clinic that I had my first rotation at, which I just mentioned. Um, and it just really was nice to kind of get those connections and then just build off of them later on. But I loved being able to have so many different people to bounce ideas off of in school. And even now, like all of my friends were still in like group texts with each other, like talking about different patient cases, like, how would you treat this? Like, is anybody else seeing this in the clinic? How are you guys kind of handling COVID and all of your precautions? Like, what have you noticed works the best? So I just kind of like having that network under uh, currently done and so working off of. That is excellent, Keelan. And it's so great to hear how impractical it is from going to clinical rotation to actually working there to show you how that group is. I love to hear it. You're in a group text with everybody. So that's awesome. Success story. Love to hear that. Um, all right. So we're going to go over to Shweta. So um, at LECOM, I would say it's not the most typical situation due to COVID. However, I think all of us are working really well with the situation, as well as the doctors and professors that are teaching us. But um, typically, I start my day um, in the morning, and we just have lectures. So I'm part of the lecture um, Based program here and so there's two other pathways as well which is problem-based learning as well as directed study but I decided to um, stick with the lectures so um, 8 to 12 in the morning would typically be for lectures and um, depending on the subject of that week they switched up for COVID so right now we're kind of doing subject by subject and um, we learn in the morning, but what's really nice is in the afternoon, even though we still have lectures, 
we have workshops and labs that are directly um, correlated with the lectures we just had. And those are gonna be more clinical cases that we can learn from. So they'll give us an opportunity to break out into groups since we cannot meet on campus. So it's been really nice to kind of talk to the other students who are going through the same thing of having online classes. Um, but yeah, it's just a lot of group work kind of in the second half of the day. And then typically after my day is over, I usually take a little break for myself, usually go for a run while I can before the snow comes. And um, from there, just kind of set my night up just for some review of what I learned that day. But unfortunately, no um, clinical experience yet, just because I am a first year in med school. Um, typically after your second year, um, you'll have rotations, which will kind of give you a better idea of what you learned from your first two years. Excellent. Thank you very much, Sweta. And then last but not least, over to Lauren. All right. So my uh, life now looks a lot different than when I was in school. Um, but when I was in school, I definitely would say that um, during the optometry program, the first year, you're definitely mostly in the classroom and in labs learning clinical skills and um, all the stuff you need to learn optometry wise. Um, and after your first year, you definitely build up the clinical hours. So starting the first year, like I mentioned, you're in clinic one day a week, building up to at least two and a half. Um, and then on your third year, uh, no, fourth year rather, you're totally off on rotations. Um, so you're actually immersed in clinic, um, definitely at a VA hospital. Um, where you're working with optometrists, ophthalmologists, primary care doctors, um, all the other different health professions. Um, there's also community health center rotations that you can go through. So working with um, that as a population, you definitely learn a lot. Um, then I also worked at a private practice. So um, that was definitely, a, so you, we got all the different fields of optometry. Um, my last rotation was actually an optometry ophthalmology practice um, where I was hired from there. So that's currently where I am now. Um, so it's, it's awesome being able to co-manage surgeries with different doctors that I'm working with, um, bouncing ideas off of other doctors, working with primary care doctors, neurologists all day, um, sending patients off for surgery. So um, I feel like the MCPHS program has really prepared me for success throughout my career, um, especially with all the clinical um, concepts that they have throughout the program. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Lauren. That was fantastic. Um, so thank you, everybody, for joining us. I hope that uh, everybody in attendance found this informative and helpful. I know there's probably a lot of questions because you heard about a lot of different journeys or past journeys and different majors that people took part in. So if you have any questions, do not hesitate and please call the MCPHS Admission Office. You can actually just find all the contact info on our website. But again, I know these conversations, a lot of them are different paths. So we want to make sure we answer any questions so you know what lies ahead of you if any of this interests you. So again, thank you so much. Thank you to all of our fantastic panelists. Those are awesome stories to hear, and I'm glad to see everybody's doing so well during these crazy times. But we look forward to chatting with everybody, and thank you so much for coming out this evening.